Now in my previous video, I talked about the best antidepressants for depression and my top three were fluoxetine, sertraline and citalopram. However, some people have both anxiety and depression and fluoxetine, though brilliant for depression, does not work as well for anxiety. Fluoxetine is the recommended drug if you're a teenager with depression, if you have history of self-harm, if you're a breastfeeding mom, and if you're someone who has a high risk of overdose because fluoxetine is the safest drug to take when those of overdose. However, I would not put it as my top drug if you had both depression and anxiety. I would say my top choice for depression and anxiety is sertraline, also known as Lustral or Zoloft. It comes in different doses, which range from 50 to 200 milligrams. It is safest in pregnancy. It is safe in elderly, especially on those with heart medications. If you've got heart problems and you're not able to take other antidepressants like citalopram or velafaxin. It also works quicker than most other SSRIs because the benefit is usually seen within two weeks, while other drugs might take up to four weeks to see the effect. Apart from sertraline, my other two choices would be acetalopram and citalopram. Acetalopram works better for anxiety than citalopram in those people who also have depression. And if you had just depression, I'll probably go for citalopram over acetalopram, but it's also advised to take citalopram with caution if you've got heart problems. These drugs, as I earlier mentioned, belong to the new group of antidepressants called your SSRIs, which is your selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and they have less side effects than your old generation antidepressants such as your trazodone, dolizepin, and several other antidepressants. Now, if you had sleep as the main problem, I would probably recommend another antidepressant called metazepine over sertraline. However, there is the issue of weight gain with metazepine and is thought to increase your appetite, and it can also make you feel groggy in the morning as metazepine is a drug that's taken at night time. Also, metazepine works better for sleep at low doses such as your 7.5 and 15 milligram dose, while metazepine works better for depression and anxiety at your 15, 30 and 45 milligram doses. Here's a fact to know, it is not recommended to take ibuprofen, which is a painkiller medication if you're already on sertraline as it increases the chances of you having a stomach bleed. So if you're going to take ibuprofen, you should take a tummy protection tablet such as omeprazole. Also to mention the side effects of antidepressants such as reduced sexual libido, headaches, dizziness, feeling emotionally numb or flat, disturbed sleep or having too much sleep, feeling tired all the time, you know, foggy brain, just having this out of body depersonalization as they would call it. So this is a reason why a lot of people stop the medication, especially if it goes on for more than two weeks. I did say sertraline is my preference for prescribing antidepressants, but for another patient it might be citalopram is the preference based on their previous history and experience, or for another patient it might be metazapine or velafaxin. It all comes down to personal experience at the end of the day. You know, one patient might have taken sertraline and they might have noticed that it had really bad side effects where they felt pins and needles, numbness, chest pain, while another patient might have taken sertraline and they will say it's the best of all the antidepressants they've taken. But what makes sertraline my top choice is the fact that it works quicker, it can be used in pregnant women, it has less side effects than most other medications as reported by patients, and there is room to increase the dose where you have 25, 50, 100, 150 and 200 milligrams. Whereas with other antidepressants, you might have to increase two or three times before considering changing to another medication. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out my other videos on mental health where I talk about the best antidepressants for sleep, as well as my review of sertraline for depression and anxiety.